So the code that we've got is, uh, is this result here. And as we've seen, we want to get it over to the result like the, the school project, which is uh, over here. So we want to create more content screens. Um, and so what I'm going to do is a little copy and paste, because that is very useful. Before I do that, I want to think ahead, because we've got this idea that we've designed over here. And actually, there was also a few other uh, ideas that we could incorporate here. Let me just draw them on, our, on, this, note, uh, on this paint file. Um, we've got also these concepts of screens, what they will actually sort of look like. This is also part of the whole wireframing or mock-up stage. We're going to have uh, a particular screen that has a particular design that has a top header and footer area. So header, footer, content area. That sort of screen, we can call it screen A. Screen A is going to be used in various parts of the project. The home screen, the PC screen, the com the art screen. So screen A is a particular design I'm going to use a few times. If we test the site, we've got uh, pop-ups once in a while, and that's got a slightly different design. That one's got perhaps rounded edges. It's got only a header and a little close box, a little close icon. So this will be a pop-up kind of, and then content is there. This will be a pop-up that might be our screen B we can use that sort of screen design for various aspects when we want little bits of information to pop up rather than long bits of content. There's also another screen that we've got in the project which just is the header with content and that one could be C. That one is found more uh, like when we actually list all of our classes. We, we don't need a footer because we need more space to have more of our content. And I think, uh, well, we can also define this other one here. We've got uh, the side panel. So this is going to be a side panel that opens up. That could be screen D. So this is just more of the planning phase. What in general are we going to do design-wise for our project uh, so that we can be consistent? We don't want this the, the, the app to look you know, like a jumble with a bunch of weird colors on every screen and such and designs, but we do want the sort of design language uh, so that it uh, is a consistent project. Question? Um, when you put a footer, do you limit the content? We limit the visible content a screen full at a time, but if we remove that footer, we can see more at once before the person scrolls. And then depending on some devices that are older, that have less screen real estate, we might not need those footers because they've got a smaller device. So we can get pretty complex that it can detect the size of your screen and show and hide footers as necessary. Because um, that's always the problem with us web or app designers. There's so many screens, there's so many devices. Is it portrait, is it landscape, and all of that. But these, uh, these designs here, I'm going to save them and put them into the network folder a little later. But here I'll say app, well, I'll say design notes, app screens, A, B, C, D, the header footer one, the only header, the little pop-up one, side panel. You probably can think of some other designs as well. Um, but that leads us into here that what I've got at the moment is everything. I've got the header and the footer and the nav bar. Oh, I forgot to say that in my in my drawings here that the some of the screens also have a nav bar. So this one here design A <coughs> Um, has a nav bar at the top with, with clickable buttons. Um, I would need that in the pop-up box. I may or may not want that on the 
you know, the C screen. I definitely don't want it on the D screen. But it's uh, the design language of our project. So what we need to do is create more screens. If we need, uh, according to our goal of our project, a home screen, an art screen, a computer's screen. And I've got three buttons waiting for me. So I'm going to copy and paste some of my code so I can quickly create some sections. But I want to think smarter because I know I have an idea of what I want to do. Before I do this copying and pasting, what I want to do is I want to define some of these elements that I'm going to use over and over so I don't have to retype my code. Let's get into our code and let's go to our line. We'll start with line 30. I've got there the heading one that says header is here. Well, we're assuming this is an actual screen of content. This will be our home screen. Heading one will be our home. We've got then the actual navigation and the thing that says buttons. Actually, wait a minute. Home will be what is the name of our app at the very top, which will be my SDCE. So the name of our app will be my SDCE. That's the little strip at the top, which will show um, at the top. Then line 37 is our button, which will be our home button. We're going to have a home button, a button for art classes, a button for computer classes. Line 42. Again, if I'm referencing a number and my line 42 doesn't look the same as your line 42, that's okay. Just around that area, try to find what I'm looking for. I'm looking for href and a button that we will call art. These are the art classes. And then around line 47, a button for computer, computer classes. <clears throat> home button, art button, computer button, which looks like that. Home, art, computer. We'll change those icons a little later. Um, oh, we'll do it now. We're here. Uh, icons right here. We've got data icon home, data icon bars, data icon star. Um, <coughs> bars. We don't exactly have an icon built into jQuery Mobile that will be great for art. Um, we've got a movie camera, but that's probably not the same. I'm going to choose one called Grid, just because it reminds me of a grid of colors. Again, icons are dependent on their environment or their context. And so once I put the button, I put the text of art, gives it a better meaning that that is related to art. Computer. We use star. Now we're going to be... We've got a little limitation here because... No, actually, wait. Let's do gear. We have an icon that is the classic power button, you know, the zero and the one, a classic power button for a computer. I believe it's called power. But we won't be able to access it yet because we are connected over to jQuery Mobile 1.3x. When they went up to 1.4x, they gave us a bunch of new icons. So we can try to reference an icon that doesn't exist in this set, and it'll just be blank. And eventually, when we add jQuery 145, then it'll work. We'll do it later, but for the moment, I've got gear. That's close enough. This gear makes me think of tech, technology, computers. <coughs> sure. Home button, art button, computer button. There's my header. I've got the name of my app up there. And on footer, I don't want it to say footer. I can make it say any variety of content, but for the moment, I will make it have a copyright notice. Our footer is way at the bottom, so go all the way down to line 128. And we will write copyright. Anyone remember the HTML code to write the copyright symbol? Yes. Yes, let's tell us. 
Ampersand copy. <laughs> Perfect. Ampersand copy. Semicolon. That creates the copyright symbol. Go ahead and put, and then the year, and then go ahead and put in um, the name of your company if you want, or anything. I guess I'll just put SDCE, even though that's not really the copyright holder. This is the copyright holder. And one fun thing that I've introduced on my latest versions of the class, you know, actually, you guys might be the first I'll tell about this. We can put other icons here that are not only limited to the jQuery mobile. Let's go to the web and let's go to this website, getemoji.com. And here we can tap into the new language of the world, emoji. These little icons that we share with each other when we text each other, you know, the little smiley face, the little dollar sign, uh, the dollar symbol, the, do do the dollar bill, the thumbs up, the sad face, the cat, the crying cat face, all of this stuff. Um, you can copy and paste this just to play with this. I'm going to take this little alien icon. I'm going to select it, just drag it, select it, copy. I will paste it. it. May not look correct there, but when you view it on the browser, it will render. So if you go to getemoji.com, find an icon that you like, select it, right click it, copy it, it's just copy and paste. It's not going to look correct in Notepad. It doesn't understand that character code. And so um, it'll look proper once you actually view it in the browser. Or when we get it to the point that it's an app, it'll also render there. And depending on the device viewing it, it looks different. Emoji looks different from device to device. On our Windows computers, they, they look kind of like, you know, the basic kind of icon here. And uh, if you click on any of these, uh, or actually, let's see, if you look it up and then click on it, it'll then show you what it looks like on different devices. So if you've got an iPhone, you, that's how it looks like for you. On Android devices, that's what that looks like. Windows, it looks like that. So at the moment, we're seeing this one. But then when this loads up as an iPhone app, it'll look like that. Mm -hmm. When it loads up for an Android device, it'll look like that. For a Samsung, it'll look like that. LG, HTC on Twitter, and so forth. So over here on getemoji.com, we've got you know 200 little icons. that you can add to your project. OK, so what I'm trying to do is build up my basic screens here. I've got the header section, the footer section, and a content section. I want to create those same elements for art screen computer screen. We'll do it a little easier with some copy and paste. Let's back up to line 26. We'll take the comment as well so that we can rewrite it. And we're going to need to select everything down to 56 or so. We're taking everything in the header. We're starting to take the article and the heading there but not anything actually in the content, because I might not need all of those things. I'm going to copy between lines 26 and 56, so where you've got that comment of home, down to where you've got the end of heading 2. Copy that, and to create a brand new screen, we're going to paste it right after the end of that section, which in my case is line 131. I'm going to make a couple of enters here, and on line 133, paste. That copied the, the start of the section, the header, the start of article, 
I'm going to need to close article, do my footer, and close my section. So next line here, close the article. Because I didn't copy everything inside of the article. Just the starting of it. Close the article. Can you, can you Let me finish my thought here and then I'll help you out in a moment. Then I want to copy the end of it all. Footer, close section. So I'll back up to my existing section and I'm going to select in my case lines 126 to 131. I guess I could have copied the article there. Uh, footer. Whatever, whatever's in the footer, open and close, end of the section. And then I'll paste it after the article. So I've got a, a brand new section with its own footer, its own article, its own header. And I did the copy and paste just so that I can save myself some effort. I'll stop and help people in just a moment. I'll do one more thing which is on section, we cannot have more than one thing called the same ID. If we've got a button that goes from the home screen to the about screen, the about screen, the art screen, the contact screen has it to have its own unique ID. It'll get confused if you try to click on the home button and you've got two home screens. Which would it go to? And because it's an ID, it's a CSS, construct, it, there can only be one. So line 134 or so, which is where your new section starts, that ID, we'll simply call it art. And on the comment, I'll say this is art section. Home section, art section, PC section, whatever, so I can keep track of my sections. Let me pause if people need some help, but the purpose of this is that now I've created a new, a new screen and you need to do one more thing if you can figure it out. I need to be able to click on the art button and take me to the art section. See if you can figure that out on your own for a moment, then I'll do it. Did anyone have any trouble doing this copy and paste that I just did? I see the top Because I didn't change the art code section yet. The top where exactly? Where the first article. Okay. The first article is right there. <coughs> Anyone else need a little help copying that over? Did everyone get the sign in sheet? So, this um, is one of the things that I think can be improved with jQuery Mobile creating more than one section. If we had started with a simpler starting point, our copying and pasting would be a little bit easier. But since we've got a home screen with a lot of content, we don't want all that content. We just want the pieces that make up a section. And I, uh, uh, if you do get the Kodika software, you can easily create sections and link them together. We're doing it the hard way, the long way. And so we're copying and pasting these pieces to create a new section and we're making sure that the ID is correct because the first one has its own name line 27 ID equals home but then down at the bottom of our new section we should have ID art 
in order for the link to work on our menu back on line 41 35, 41, and 47 or so, is that href equals page 1, which doesn't exist, page 1, page 1. So line 35, href should say pound home. There's a section within ID of home. And therefore, the home button points to the home screen. We've got a button for art, and we've got a section within ID of art. So that's going to be pound art. And we're not there yet, but we're going to have a section for computers. Where does we'll write it? Pound computers. Computer. And what I'm saying about that this is a bit cumbersome in the beginning with jQuery Mobile is I did this for the home screen, not the art screen not the PC screen. Every screen that has a navbar is independent of the other navbars. And there is a way to do persistent navbars in jQuery Mobile, but it's a little tricky to really get it to work. <coughs> so we're doing it this way that it's not that smart, but it works. Each screen that needs a navbar has its own navbar. So down at the bottom on my brand new section, that one's still pointing to page one, page one, page one. So on your new art section, you also need to set pound home, pound art, pound computer. Line 142 or so, pound home, pound art, art com pound computer. And now hopefully at this point, if I save it and run it, I've got my home screen. I'll click on the Art button, and it should go to the Art screen. I'm on the Art screen. I click on the Home button, it goes back to the Home screen. I click on the Computer button, nothing happens. There's no computer screen. Question? You know, having some kind of, you know, putting this type, you know, that nav bar, that common block of code into a, uh, like, an include file of some sort, so you had it one place you added it? Well, that's what I was so sort of saying a little while ago about a persistent navigation. There is a way to do it where you put it outside of the constructs of the section, but it then still needs some JavaScript to fully work. So yes, there is a way to do it, but it's a little complex for us at the moment. Um, so my point here is when I save and run this, and then let's see if mine works, and then I'll check if everyone's works, because we've done a lot so far. I'm on home screen, I click Art. This is the Art screen, nothing there yet. Now that's still highlighted, which we'll fix, but I click on the Home button, and it goes back to Home. <coughs> These two work at the moment. <coughs> click on Computers, mm, Computers doesn't exist yet, so it doesn't go anywhere. I'll help everyone if you're falling behind in just a moment. One more thing. The reason that this is still highlighted when I'm on the home screen is because do you notice anything in your code that might explain it? When I'm on the home screen, when I'm on the home screen, I've got something that says class, UI button active, UI state persist. When I'm on the art screen, that is also there, making it highlighted. It's highlighting the wrong thing. So it looks like if I add, or if I move, class equals blah, blah, blah. If I move that to the art button in the art section, be careful here, in the art section, which is on down on 148 or so, I need to take class and cut it, but not that angle bracket, because that angle bracket is the closer for the A tag. On line 143, I'm going to select class equals quote, end quote. I'm going to select that and cut it. It's going to leave a floating angle bracket, sure, but that's the closer for the A tag. And then I need to add it to the art inside of the angle bracket. Be careful there. Don't just paste it on the next line. It needs to be in the angle bracket. Back up there, like that angle bracket, press enter to move it down. 
like that, and then I can paste it. And that's totally optional to put it on the next line. It could be on one long line. Then I write it class to the art button in the art screen. Don't add this to the home screen. And I'm going to do something like that eventually when I get a computer screen. Let's see how that works. I'm on the home screen. Home is highlighted. I'm on the art screen. Art is highlighted. Back to home, home is highlighted. When we do computer, computer will be highlighted. Anyone need any help at this point? That's from Kubernetes. See when you changed section. I never, I never changed it. I changed it last week, so that's one of the things I said at the end of the day. Either you guys would change these things yourself, or you would take all my code. Yeah, my USB folders. Yeah, but I was giving my code in the code folder. So at this point, yeah, when I got.
Okay, so if it's working this far, you probably know what we need to do next. We need a new section for computers. We can make it easier on ourselves because we've got a basic section here that we can copy and paste. We were trying to work with a section that was complete for the home screen. That's why we didn't copy everything. But here for the art screen, we can copy the whole thing. It's complete. If I start from the comment on line 133, and I go, and if, if I then follow all the way down to the end of section, which is 171. So basically the start of my new art section down to the end of my new art section. I'm going to copy all of that. And after the end of section, before the end of body, a couple of enters and then paste. And I've got a brand new section, which needs a unique ID. So I'm going to back up to where that new section starts, line 174. Section ID computer because my nav is looking for an ID, the pound symbol, of computer. If you called it computers, plural, you make sure that's called computers, plural. If you called it computer capital C in your nav bar, you make sure that's capital C in the ID. It is case sensitive. And because I'm in a new section, uh, my comment here, this will be my computer section. And my nav bar needs a little update too. If I go to computer screen, the art button is going to be highlighted. I'm no longer in the art section. I'm in the computer section. So I need to highlight my computer button. Nav bar, here we go. Um, home doesn't need to highlight. Art doesn't need to highlight. Computer needs to highlight. So I'm going to move. I'm going to move the highlight, the active state, down to the computer screen, but remember to be careful, don't take the angle bracket away from art. Make sure you leave it up there. And then when you paste this into computer, remember to take the angle bracket at the end of the line, paste it there. So now my computer section, computer button is highlighted in the computer section. Angle bracket close, close, and close. <coughs> check my code. I've got the home screen. I can click the computer screen. There's computer. It's highlighted. I click on art. There's art. I click back to home. I should be able to go to a section on every click. Yes? Um, on the computer uh, code, the nav bar, it's a data icon position top. And we didn't do that last class. Is that something that's pertinent for us to do? Um, wherever you see data icon position, it literally will let you put the position of your icon, and the default there is said top. So we've got an icon at the top of our text. We can put bottom, left, or right. So we can move the icon to the bottom of the text, or the left, or the right of the text. We didn't do it together, but that's what that does. It just moves your icon top, bottom, left, or right. Another question? Yes. Can you just review those edits real quick again for computer? Yes, on computer, what I did, what I added was, uh, I added the ID of computer so that my nav button works properly. I also then edited 
the nav bar. I moved class UI button from art down to computer, making sure that I've added it inside the angle bracket of the A tag in computer and left the angle bracket for the A tag of art. Um, those were the big things. Um, art computer. Is everyone there? Anyone need a little help? So if you wanted more screens, we would need more sections. Um, that's one of the cumbersome things about jQuery Mobile. Um, with newer versions, this will get easier. And with Codica, it's easier. But it's not so bad here when it's not a very complex project. What I want to do now is start to populate some content into these different screens. Based on my idea of what I've got up here, I have the widgets to do the right task, but they're all on the home screen. So it's going to be a little bit of cut and paste from the home screen down to the art screen or whatever with my widgets. So I'm going to back up to the home screen. I've got heading, line 54. I've got a button, line 57. I've got a div, line 60, collapsible set. I want to move that out of home into art. Between line 60 and, six, and 77 or so is that collapsible set. So I'm going to select that div from line 60 down to the slash div to 77 and cut it. I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to paste it into the art screen. That's where it's going to uh, be useful to me. So make sure you've got the start of the div, the end of the div. Cut it, and then I'll go down to Art, Let's see Art section, and I'll paste it right after the heading. Inside the article, after the heading, paste. So now I've got... No, cut. We don't need it on the we don't need it on this home screen anymore. We need to move it, so we'll cut it. Copy will leave a copy. Cut and we'll move it. So we're gonna cut it over here, and now I've got this collapsible element in the art screen. And it should look like this. So my home screen no longer has the collapsible element. I go over to the art screen. And it's there. It's just a matter of moving it below heading, H2. Next, I'm going to move over that, um, I'm going to cut and paste that list widget. If I go back, we've got UL, data role, list view. This element will, do, will be useful for me in the computer screen. So back on line 61 to uh, 83, I want that UL. I want that unordered list, those bullet points. I want to cut them again. I want to move them out of the home screen, home section. And I will paste this into the computer section. Again, inside the content, right after heading two. So 
I took it out of the home screen. I'm over on the art screen. Collapsible. I'm over on the computer screen. List view. Insert, insert for mine was at approximately line 183 inside of your section of, P of computers. This button is, um, well, let me get back to that button. It's awkward at the moment, but we'll get back to it. This link that we've got, honestly, it's really useless. The Kodika link widget is useless. We know how to make links, and there's nothing special about links. We're going to delete it. This picture, again, in, uh, in the experience of teaching this class for three years, it's also the version of what Kodika gives us is also pretty useless. We're going to delete that picture. So we go back to our home section and find the link first. Let's see, link right here. Line 61. There's a plain old link, data transition fade. Who cares? So that link is not going to do anything useful. I'm going to remove it completely. Well, they actually also put it inside of a div for some reason. So I'm going to actually delete the div that encompasses the link everything there. It's not that useful. So line 60 or so, you should see div ahref slash div. Delete that. And you'll also see a div for an image. That's not so good either. So find div style with 288 and then image kodika.com and the div. Delete that. That's actually not a very useful placeholder widget. We will create our own images. This has got some built-in style, so it's it's not so good. Inline styles, we want to avoid them because then they're hard-coded. So I'm going to take that out. We have a grid. And on this case, this is actually, this could be useful to us on the other screens because this will help us divide up our screen into different little sections. So on this, I want to copy and paste this, this grid into my computer screen and my art screen because I may want to use them. So line 61, which is my div of class UI grid A, select that whole chunk. It's before the map starts. <coughs> I'm going to copy it. I will leave a copy of it on the home screen, and I will copy that and paste it into the art and the PC screen, the computer's screen. And I'll paste it after the collapsible and after the divider. So on my art screen, I've got a div that is a collapsible set that ends at about line 134. I'm going to paste it there. I still have it copied. It remembers your last thing until you copy a new thing, if you didn't know. And then I'll also paste that into my computer section after the UL list view. home screen I've got the grid, on the art screen I've also got a grid, and on the computer screen screen another grid. It was at about 213.
this map is destined for a completely different screen we haven't created yet. So I'll leave it there for the moment. little more polish I want to do here. I want on the computer screen instead of instead of it saying heading, I want it to take I want it to say something like learn computers, take a computer class. Something that is a good heading for that section. Same thing for art. I want to say learn you know, become artistic or learn art. And on home I want it to say welcome. So all of those that have just that plain old heading, you can think of something relevant for each section, or you can write what I'm about to. I'm going to back up to my line 55 in my home section, heading to. Instead of it saying heading, I'll just say welcome. That button, actually, we're not really going to, we're not, we're not going to use it Well, we will. We'll leave it, actually. Um, okay, then I need to change the heading to inside of my art section. So in your art section, find your heading, heading to, and we'll say, this is the art section, so we'll say, get artsy. And then in the computer screen, we'll say, get techie. Go down to that section, line 188, and I'll say get techie. I just want to put something in those headings instead of it saying the you know antiseptic heading, I want you to say something a little more real. Welcome. Get artsy. Get techie. Mm. On the art screen, this is going to have a listing of a few. It can have as many as we want, obviously. But we're going to say, just starting off with, three fake art classes that the college offers. And we'll do the same thing under computers. We'll, we'll, we'll mention some fake classes that the, the computer classes that the college offers. So I'll back up to the art section, and I'll make the first little drop down, you know, basic art. The next one, intermediate art. The third one, advanced art. So I'll back up to my art section, which is at about line 120. All of them are simply named section header. I want to call this section, well, there's no such thing as basic art, advanced art, all of that. Well, there's kinds of art, so we'll say maybe there's a watercolor class. So we'll say, I don't know, watercolor 101. That's a class that we offer. Another class in the section will say then we'll we'll have uh, oil paints 101. And then for the third art class, what other kinds of art are there? Avant-garde installations. No, uh, we'll do uh, pencil, pencil drawing, pencil drawing 101. So three classes, three types of majors, whatever, with some text inside of it. We'll borrow some text maybe from the college's website so that it's not just plain text. And remember, inside of that section, we can have pictures and other stuff, which I think we'll put some, some there eventually. We'll put images. But right now, these are some potential classes that we're offering in the art section. Have you heard about Of course. <laughs> of course. They'll help you land a job and everything. We've got a grid down here that is currently placeholders, top left, top right. If we don't put anything in the grid, it becomes invisible. I might want to use the grid eventually. I don't want to keep looking at top left, top right, etc. So in the grid, line 135, 
this div that is a four quadrant grid, I want to remove the placeholder text that we added to each quadrant. I want the, <coughs> the grid, but not the placeholder text so that it becomes invisible. So my art screen has some content, it has a grid that I may use in the future. I'm going to do something very similar over at the, at the uh, computers section. This one will work a little bit different in that we've got a divider. In the art screen now we've got something like this and then we can have content inside of it. And in the computer screen this concept could also work for the art screen, but just to show you different widgets, we're going to have a section of basic computer classes, intermediate computer classes, advanced computer classes. So if we find that list view in the computer screen, starts at about line 190. Remember how that's made up? You've got these dividers. And then the buttons to click on. So my first divider up here, I'll call it Basic Computer Courses. I want to be consistent. We're saying classes, I think. Courses, classes. And first button will be um, Windows 101. Second button, <coughs> Mac. 101, we've got another divider, that'll be our intermediate computer classes. In the intermediate, uh, the button there, we'll call that uh, Linux 101. And let's say I'm going to create another button, so I'll just copy and paste that, and that'll be Linux 102. We can get more complex later on, uh, but here I'm putting some content so my screens don't look like they came out of a template generator. And again, I've got my grid there that I want to take out the items, the placeholder items of the grid. I don't need that text anymore, so I'm going to take out top left, top right, all of that stuff again. Sorry, you. No problem. Top left, top right, bottom left, etc. If we need to use that grid, it'll be there waiting for us. So now my art screen has some content, my computer screen has some content. Oops. Miss something here. Probably copied and pasted. Oh, yes, there we go. I put the A tag in the same list item and it gave me a weird button. Kind of looks cool, but I'm sure it's broken. So I see what I missed. I needed to create a new list item for every button, which uh, obviously I did it on purpose. Okay. So actually, I'm going to need a new list item. And that goes in a new list item. I had put both list item, both links, in the same list item. That doesn't seem to work. They need to be in separate list items, and then that new button should work. They don't go anywhere, of course, yet, because the href is pointing to, an, to a non-existent ID, a, a new screen full of content, either a screen full of content, or a pop-up screen, or an external website. It can point to anything. 
but at the moment it's pointing to something that doesn't exist so it doesn't do anything. Taking stock of my project, I'm getting my main sections. We're going to take our last break in just a moment. And we're going to deal with now, after the break, making some of those other screens, like the pop-up screen. That requires a little bit of different code than what we've done so far. I want, as per the example, a pop-up screen like this. You click, pops up. See how the rest of the screen faded away and this pops up into its own screen? I want to do that. And that's slightly different than what we've done so far. That's what we're going toward. And we need cool pictures and all of that. So let's take our, our last break. When we come back, we'll proceed there. And if you need any help, call me over. It's 8.25. We'll be back at 8.35.